Well, Richard Gelfond is a movie industry legend, an Academy Award winner. His company bought out IMAX back in 1994, and since then, he's been its chairman or chief executive. In Australia, there are just two IMAX cinemas in Melbourne, and after seven long years, it includes COVID and a builder going broke, IMAX this week relaunched in Sydney. I sat down with Gelfond in the new cinema and asked if he's confident about the demand for IMAX in Australia. Um, that's an understatement, Ross. Um, the numbers are spectacular. Since it opened two weeks ago, it's the number one IMAX theater in the world over that period of time. And remember, we have over 1,700 theaters in 90 countries. There's an enormous demand here. And when I landed here, um, it, when I said I was with IMAX, it was incredible. I don't, I've never gotten a reaction like that anywhere else in the world. People really are craving it. Okay, so it's about the content and what you've got is more movie makers now prepared to shoot in the IMAX format to get them into these cinemas. But you know, it's not as though these are the, the most numbers of cinemas in the world, but it's the quality that they seem to be looking, looking for. I think it's a combination of the movie and I also think it's the experience. Um, people really want to get off their couches. They want to leave their homes. They're tired of the pandemic era. I think maybe they're tired of their families and watching, you know, doing everything on the couch. And it's really a global trend where our numbers for IMAX, our market share in North America is up 50% since pre-pandemic. And our market share globally is up 40% since pre-pandemic. And yes, it has a lot to do with the movies, but I think it also has a lot to do with people wanting something special. I mean, I don't care how much money you have, you can't get this in your house. You certainly can't get it in your house, but it's to be fair that the at-home entertainment experience is much better than it's ever been. And yet notwithstanding that, the people are still prepared to get up and have an outside experience. Yeah, I think they're different. I think they could exist side by side. I think the in-home entertainment experience for episodic TV, the streaming, I think that all really works. But when I think when it comes to movies and when it comes to special effects and when it comes to sound, but maybe the most important thing is the communal nature of it. I think for a big spectacle kind of thing. People want to see it, not only with their friends, but strangers. So when there's a big movie, I think they want to laugh together, they want to cry together, they want to clap together. And I think they really miss that. And I think people miss that whole cultural implication. During the pandemic, a lot of um, predictors said, oh, movies are never going to come back. And I was sort of proselytizing that, you know, back in Pompeii, there were theaters, right? In Shakespeare's time, there were theaters. I didn't think like a virus for a few months was gonna change the human race that much. And I think it's proven to be true. People really wanna be with other people and they wanna experience things that they can't do at home. Okay, so IMAX has two cinemas now in Australia, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne. What sort of population base do you need to justify the investment in a cinema of this scale? So, well, this scale is really unique, let's be clear this is one of the biggest screens in the world this is this is a, a really special project but usually we have um uh, we divide a country into zones and we divide them up and it's not that scientific because obviously some zones a river runs through the middle or a mountain range or whatever but we think that australia could have 40 theaters hang on 40 think, you've got two now 40 yeah, I, it's it's driving me crazy ross i don't understand it uh you know in, in ecuador we have nine in Australia, we have two. In London, we have 50. In Japan, we have 40. Um, this, one of the reasons I came here is not only to open this theater, which I'm incredibly excited about, but I'm gonna meet with some Australian exhibitors and say, what's wrong with you guys? I mean, can't you, don't they like money here in Australia? Because, but then would, the cinemas obviously would not be of this scale, but then quite clearly you could put them into suburban areas, put them a, 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 alongside shopping centres, a range of different things as to where you could actually place these I, IMAX cinemas. So to give you like a crazy example is China has 800 IMAX theatres and it has 200 more in backlog. So that's a thousand IMAX theaters. Again, we'll go back to Australia having two. I mean, I know it's a big country, but there are a lot of zones and a lot of places it could be. And, and I think it has something to do um, with the mindset of the exhibition 
group in that particular country. So people always say, you know, well, it works in these six countries, but I'm not sure it's going to work in my country. And inevitably, I haven't found a country um, wh where it doesn't work. We're doing great in New Zealand. We just, we opened a theater in Wellington, and part of the reason we opened it there was because Jim Cameron was making the avatars, and we thought having a theater nearby would be a great thing. And event opened it with us up there. And um, in less than a year, they've done about a, a million and a half US dollars already. So, so this is something which is going to grow because, you know, you've also, as I say, got the stock of films and entertainment to come into these cinemas that people might not have seen, especially in Sydney where it hasn't been here for seven years. So you've got this whole, you know, sort of backlog, if you like, of, of movies, plus a whole bunch more coming out. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine that people in Sydney haven't seen Top Gun and IMAX. It's a different movie. It was partly filmed with IMAX cameras. We invented cameras that went in the nose cone of it. And it, it, it like in regular cinema, the top and bottom are cut off. You can't see this, the full spectrum. So, yeah, I think people are going to really like it when they get to see things that, um, they haven't been able to see. Uh, you know, Avatar 2. It, again, was almost as, I think it was bigger for us than Avatar 1. Seeing that in 3D was incredible. So I, you know, I, one, one of the things I love to do is come to new cinemas where they haven't seen it because you just watch the people's faces, and um, which is what I do a lot of times when I come in, and especially kids who have never really experienced it before. I think they're like, wow, I've been missing out on this. Yeah, no, so the, the importance of people like James Cameron or Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, film with IMAX uh, technology as well, their credibility actually means that other movie makers will also be enticed to try and make movies in, in this genre. Well, one of the things that we find is we really over-index in IMAX when um, some of these movies are shot. Um, so, for example, in Oppenheimer, we did 20% of the world's box office on eight-tenths of 1% of the screens. And it's, for a lot of those films like that, um, there's no question. There's been, you know, the, you name some of the directors that are using it, but some new ones like Kerry Fuganaka shot part of um, James Bond in IMAX and uh, Jordan Peele did Nope in IMAX using IMAX cameras, and even Greta Gerwig, um, after Barbie was released, uh, Warner and she came to us and said, wow, I'd love to see how Barbie would look in IMAX. So we re-released Barbie in IMAX. So the world's great filmmakers really want to paint on this canvas. I'll tell you what, Rich Girlfriend, it's a great chat. We could go on for hours on this, but I've got to wrap it up here. Many thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me.